So we're ready to begin whenever, whenever you want. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure to present you Marco Jaglin. Uh, he's a PhD student working in CTUS uh, by the supervision of Victor Manuel Brea. And uh, he's going to present you analog to information converters with CMOS event cameras with a spatial temporal processing through deep learning techniques. So the idea is to present uh, these interesting event based cameras. And there are two main challenges in his research. First of all, removing noise and later implemented uh, deep learning techniques with this camera. So go ahead, Mark. Thank you. Perdona, Juan Antonio, no se le escucha. No se escucha, Marco. Se ha vuelto a apagar el micro. Yo no entiendo nada. Hola. No, right? Um, well. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Okay, so um. It's good. Uh, with uh, frame-based cameras, this is something that you are all. Uh, then I will uh, discuss uh, our, our pixel. I will. <laughs> uh, um, a comment on future. per unit time, it is uh, calculated as a product. Uh
and this will lead to uh, that although you designed every pixel the same, uh, they will uh, have a different output. Um, and it is fixed for given sensor. Here is an example of a fixed pattern noise in Samuel's image sensor. In uh, frame-based cameras that uh, rely on uh, pixels like 30 APS and 40 APS, it can be removed, hide by uh, processing, but in event cameras, yeah, since they have more components and some nodes that you cannot access in pixel, this cannot be uh, fully removed. The dynamic range is a ratio between a max output signal, that is usually when a photo does saturate, when you cannot uh, receive uh, so much uh, photo electrons and, and it starts uh, to um, leak them out. And the noise floor, this is usually the lowest uh, value of brightness that you detect. You will never detect zero because of this uh, noise floor. The formula is given here, and we have, we, here we have an example. On the left, we have a lower, a, a camera of a lower dynamic range, and as you can see in the background, it cannot discern uh, uh, the, the scene, the mountains and the sea and the ships. While on the right, we have an example of higher uh, camera that looks the same scene, but with higher dynamic range. So. When you design a, a pixel, all of these things you would like to have as best as possible, but most of the time you will not be able to do so. You will need to trade one for the other. Here I have uh, some um, interplay between different, uh, different uh, uh, pre performance metrics. This is uh, my personal uh, like uh, uh, trade-off that I made that I made, uh, that, that is that I uh, noticed. So for instance, uh, you can have higher power consumption uh, with higher speed. So if you want higher speed, the camera runs faster, it will need to uh, uh, consume more power. If you want higher dynamic range, for instance, you can increase the voltage, but this can also increase power consumption. Uh, you can increase the field factor, uh, noise is dependent, for instance, for a dynamic range because the it depend the total dynamic range depends on the noise floor. So the lower the noise, the lower the dynamic range. Also, uh, we can see that resolution might be related to pixel size and uh, power consumption because the more pixels you have, you will also need to transfer uh, transmit more data, which will over increase uh, power consumption. So, uh, when we, in comparison to the event cameras, so standard cameras, so main uh, difference is that pixels are in the in standard cameras, pixels are triggered at regular time interval, and they output full image frames, so analog value. While event cameras, they are only triggered locally, and when there is a change in a scene, so. When a high uh, high enough difference uh, in illumination is detected, and the output is a stream of events, uh, event cameras only output uh, digital uh, values and bits. Um, that is only ones and zeros. Uh, this allows them to be much faster to uh, reduce power consumption. Uh, but they they suffer from some um, um, disadvantages like larger pixel size because you need to put uh, you need to like embed algorithms e inside the pixel. Um, events are um, so events uh, transmit uh, they need to transmit location array, timestamp, and polarity of change. So here I have an. Here I have a video sh uh, showing the demonstration of an event camera. So you, what you will see is that this disk with a black dot rotating. On the upper part, you will have standard camera output, and the, uh, on the lower part, uh, how an event camera uh, uh, detects the motion will be shown. So as, as you can see, standard camera outputs uh, full frames, while 
uh, event cameras will only output the part that it changes. When uh, there will be no motion in the scene, like now, it will stop transmitting. There will be no, basically the part of the transmitting the same information, which might be useless. It can also detect much faster because it can be faster, so it is much more resilient to motion blur. Here, in this next video, we'll show you how actually it works in, in real life. So, these um, red, blue uh, on the upper part are how actually event camera sees while driving in a car, while on the bottom part we have a typical frame-based camera. Uh, so, red or blue, they discern between two events. Uh, one are on events, other are off events. On events symbolize the, the increase in brightness, while off events symbolize decrease in brightness. Um, so, some, something more details about event cameras. The most popular one are dynamic vision sensors. This, these are called also asynchronous event cameras. We can, uh, there are two types how you can uh, generate events. You can use this as a synchronous camera and you can do it by frame inferencing. This is the more, the most, the more popular right now. Uh, and its advantages are high dynamic range, which comes from a logarithmic uh, photodiod here. A logarithmic photodiodes uh, uh, have an advantage of higher dynamic damage dynamic range over, over other photodiodes. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what it gives these cameras uh, its advantage in higher dynamic range. They also don't need to be resetted. Um, since they uh, transmit only when uh, um, change is detected, uh, low power consumption is uh, expected. Uh, they also have high temporal resolution. That is, they are much faster. However, they require much more circuitry. This in this uh, uh, the this uh, implies larger pixel size. Uh, also, as you can see, they have a very unconventional output, basically ones and zeros. So, how can you uh, interpret the data? So, usually they use neural networks. They train them. They take um, uh, at the same time they take uh, frame-based uh, videos and event-based videos, and they use frame-based videos as a ground truth and train neural networks uh, to recreate the image from the uh, events. Uh, they also suffer from some dyna dynamic effects and logarithmic uh, photodiodes are much more noisy and temperature dependent than uh, some, for instance, uh, pinned photodiode, which we decided to use. So. Our approach was to replace a logarithmic photodiode with a pinned photodiode. This PPD stands for pinned pin photodiode. This will eliminate a type of uh, noise called, which is induced by leakages, but uh, it uses the advantage of logarithmic photodiode, which is higher dynamic range. For that, we installed an overhaul capacitor. So basically, when our uh, photodiode oversaturates, this uh, capacitor will uh, catch overflown electrons. Uh, this will increase higher dynamic range, but uh, you will need a more uh, complex algorithm uh, to run the pixel. We will also use correlated double sampling to lower the noise. This is especially good for um, um, that reduces reset noise, uh, offsets, and uh, one through F noise but it will also, it needs a uh, uh, more complex algorithm to run. So, in our case, we are not using logarithmic photodiode, so it will not be asynchronous, it will be synchronous. We will declare event when the difference between two frames is big enough, and we define this um, threshold from the outside. This uh, threshold is to be, um, it can be changed from the outside, it, it can be manipulated for specific use. Um, by adding an uh, overflow capacitor to the photodiode, we will change the sensitivity. And we will have two different signals with different sensitivities. And if 
these different signals are used in consecutive frames, event will be declared automatically. Uh, location in array and timestamp will come from sequential readout, and polarity of change will be determined by comparing two successive frames by a comparator inside the pixel. Well, um, as I said, this is, uh, as I said, you cannot have it all, so I made this uh, list that shows <coughs> like priorities. First, it is to have higher dynamic range. It is to uh, lower noise. You will do this by applying, uh, by implementing a uh, pin photodiode instead of a, a logarithmic and to use correlated double samplings. Uh, so noise, speed, and power consumption in like a second leak, <coughs> we should have them better or good. Sensitivity and resolution, I decided to, uh, to be neutral and fill factor and pixel size as uh, the uh, le least important. Um, event cameras, pixels are already big. If they can go up to 20 micrometers, for instance, frame-based cameras, uh, today you can find them one micrometer. So I said, um, let's go with this. So um, we came up with this structure. So. Um, here, on the left part, we have a pin photodiode uh, that is connected to the transmission gate, which is connected to the floating diffusion. This floating diffusion is connected to the so-called overflow capacitor that catches uh, overflow photoelectrons. So when the pin photodiode oversaturates, the electrons will flow through M1, then through M3 transistor, and will be deposited on the capacitor. Um, the floating diffusion point is buffered by source follower. This is typical for 40 APS, and we use 40 APS as base. Um, so we need, so as I said, we need to do frame differencing and correlated double sampling. For that, we will need a subtraction unit. It, correlated double sampling is basically a subtraction operation and also frame differencing. So this is tasked with uh, subtracting voltages. Analog memory bank since we need to know the values of two consecutive frames, frames, this analog memory bank will be used to store them. This is a bit more complex. In order to um, uh, uh, save capacitors, we need more input logic because it's not as straightforward as just depositing uh, values on frames. So the input logic um, takes values from analog memory bank and the output of the the subtraction unit and it juggles them around to make sure that right value arrives in comparison, in, on comparator at the right, right time. VREF event is that one, is the, is the, is the threshold that we said, so the lower it gets, we, sh we should be able to, do the, to detect smaller changes. Uh, VREF S is a, um, basically a voltage also set from the outside and it symbolizes uh, when we want uh, that uh, pixel uses uh, oversaturated electrons. So if usually this is uh, surpassed, this usually means that uh, photodiode is oversaturated and we should use uh, electrons from the capacitor to generate the signal. So now let's talk about uh, circuit implementation. So this uh, circuit, has the most uh, tasks currently, it is the most uh, intensive for him. Uh, the subtraction unit is implemented as a switch capacitor circuit and its uh, tasks are correlated double sampling, which is a sampling technique commonly used in image sensors to reduce resets, uh, one through F noise and fixed pattern noises. It samples the output twice, once right after reset, then it uh, collects uh, uh, the noise level, and the second time with the single signal present. This is uh, uh, this formula shows the formula for correlated double sampling, and it uh, differentiates uh, subtractions of two consecutive frames to determine their difference. The comparator is uh, implemented as a differential pair, pair followed by an inverter to increase the accuracy and gain of it. The design priority of this was to was to make it mismatch resilience. It is quite big for that reason. Um, 
power consumption and accuracy. And the tests are saturation detection, so when we will use uh, overblown uh, electrons. Uh, polarity detection, this is needed to determine whether the event is on or off. So if the if the frame one uh, in frame one there was a brighter uh, scene than in frame two, then this will go give flag one, and we will know that it is an uh, off event. No, sorry, it will be flag zero, and we will know that it is an off event. Event detection it, uh, compares the result of the frame difference to the uh, threshold voltage that we set. If this is a pest, we declare an event and it um, uh, takes like uh, it will store a, a flag of one in a digital logic. Analog memory bank uh, is uh, simply in the most simple uh, uh, design. Um, it is a capacitor buff buffered by a source follower. Uh, I wanted uh, I, I, I wanted it to be good for sensitivity because we have two source followers which will uh, lower uh, which lo source followers do not have gain of one they have a little lower so when you use uh, one you actually lose uh, sensitivity but when you use another one after that you lose sensitivity even more for that I used a LVT transistor which is low voltage threshold tr transistor which should have a um, higher, gain, higher gain than using normal one. I also design is power of an another priority is power consumption. And the task of the analog memory bank is to save and hold frames Fn and Fn minus one. On the right, we for those of you who don't know, this is a typical source follower. Um, it is implemented in uh, in this in this uh, triangle symbol. Um, so, how does it now work? So, HDR extension. So, this is the the result of correlated double sampling. As we have seen here, VRFS. So, first we use only normal electrons to sum uh, for around, for instance, 500 luxes in this case. And when when uh, this signal reaches right now, the the threshold can be set from outside, but in this example, it's set on 1.5 volt, 1.1 volt, yeah. but it can go yeah. further. Um, it will switch to the uh, to use uh, electrons from the capacitor. This reduces in a much less inclined uh, slope. And as you see, uh, there are uh, difference in sensitivities. So this introduces some nonlinearity. That is why we need um, uh, those uh, special uh, flags in the digital logic. Uh, this is shown for different type of uh, uh, values of capacitor. So we have uh, we can use a capacitor of 50 femtos, 100 femtos, and 150 femtos. The lower the capacitor, we have higher sensitivity, but we will have less dynamic range because it will, will not be able to store as much as electrons as, uh, for instance, uh, the capacitor with 150 femtos. One, the capacitor with 150 femtos will have higher dynamic range but lower sensitivity. And on the right, we sh I, I show a uh, result of uh, frame differencing. So in this case, uh, one um, frame was kept constant at 150 luxes, while other was uh, moved from 0 to 300 luxes. And this shows that uh, Fn minus Fn minus 1 uh, result. The ref event is uh, that threshold that we sent. The lower it gets, the uh, smaller changes we, can, we will detect. <coughs> so the event classification. We need, uh, so because of this, Nonlinearity. The in our case are pixels, so usually events only need two. But because of this nonlinearity, we our pixel requires four uh, uh, flags to uh, classify the the events. So this is the event flag, which is uh, 
uh, given by the, the uh, comparing uh, uh, difference between frames to the uh, event threshold polarity flag, which uh, which uh, compares two consecutive frames, and uh, depending whether one is uh, whether uh, if the first is uh, higher than the second one, the, the next one, then we have an off, then it starts zeros and we have an off event. Otherwise, we have one and we have one event. Uh, these two uh, uh, um, delays uh, store which type of a uh, signal was used. So um, we have signal uh, uh, for a signal which is very sensitive. We call this signal S1 and the, the signal S2, which uh, is generated by uh, overflowing electrons. This is called signal S2. And if these two uh, uh, delays store uh, different flags, then we declare an event immediately. And we don't check um, uh, the event flag or polarity flag because we don't need them. Here on the right bottom, we can see uh, how it looks a typical output out of the pixel. This this goes directly to the, for instance, FPGA, which catches this and stores this for bit uh, um, list uh, sequence. This is the classification table. So we have uh, four different uh, ledges, so we can have quite a few combinations. So this table actually shows uh, what type of event and when we will have one. Also, I was talking about a mismatch when two uh, um, uh, transistors will be not will not be the same due to errors in fabrication. This is an analysis of how it will affect our event generation. So we cannot uh, we cannot. Um, lower the threshold for detection of events as much as we can because of the noise and mismatches. Um, so this this uh, this shows um, so we we have um, in this case we were uh, I was uh, making sure that the first frame and the second frame were always the same. So it should never detect an event. But due to mismatches we will have this distribution. For instance um, if we this is the percentage of the total dynamic range, for instance, on the S1 uh, signal. So if we use on, uh, if the barrier is 0.9%, then uh, for instance, the red will show how, um, how many um, uh, false events we will generate. These um, lines, uh, like steep lines, they are how it should be if there are, if there are no uh, mismatch in the world. But due to the real world and the errors during fabrication, we have this kind of Gaussian distribution, which makes sense because uh, mismatch is modeled uh, by sampling uh, from Gaussian distribution. Here are uh, more examples of uh, how the threshold we set. Um, uh, uh, determines uh, these uh, uh, false event generations. Um, so the the, high, the higher the threshold we set, the more sure we will be that the events are uh, uh, true, not false. So a uh, pixel was uh, fabricated. On the left, we have a pixel layout. It, it looks like this. Um, and on the right, we have a full image array and full uh, full pixel. So um, comparison and conclusion. So here on this left side, we have our work. So um, we achieved a dynamic range simulations show that we have a, a dynamic range of 85 dBs, which compared to this guy, which, which are competing is higher, but uh, I was planning on reaching 100 dBs. Um, so um, this on the right side, this one uses logarithmic photodiode. So and it is normal to have a very higher range than us. So uh, if we do a second prototype, uh, I should probably use a bigger capacitor. Uh, power consumption, uh, well, 
it defeats some, some not, but it is in range. Uh, we are, uh, when compared uh, with uh, speed with our competitors, so this one uses frame differencing to generate events, while others, um, while this one does not. We, we, we beat this one. Uh, this one has a very high resolution. Uh, this is made by Samsung, they had a lot of money. And uh, they used, uh, um, uh, how it is called? Um, oh, they. Backside. That thing, yes. Backside yes, backside illumination. So they could kind of half the, the pixel in half. Um, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, exactly. exactly. Yes, uh, with copper co copper contacts. Um, this is at, uh, um, also a sequential from um, uh, from 2019. We defeat is on uh, uh, 350 uh, on power consumption. Uh, this was a bit hard to. Um, I think we defeat defeat this one too, but uh, this is a bit hard to, uh, they didn't say how they get this number, so I, w I, w mm, I don't want to say too much about that. For supply, um, we use more complex uh, power supply. We use 3.3 volts and 1.3 volts for, for the APS part and 1.8 volts for the digital and uh, for uh, subtraction unit, uh, analog memory bank and comparator to save, uh, to save power. Um, <coughs> this uh, uses even smaller, but uh, it is not as fast as ours, and it has a lower dynamic range. These guys don't give um, oh sorry, they don't give them data on dynamic range, so I, I don't know. But this guy also uses um, um, more complex power supply, so it achieves a well, in the same range as we, and we defeat this one, this one on power consumption. Um, well, let's talk a little bit about bad things. So, as I said, uh, priority was my priority was put low on uh, pixel size and fill factor for now. So, and uh, my pixel is quite big, much bigger, and and uh, fill factor is much smaller. So, I will need to uh, rethink about this. Um, so current and future one, so the current status is that I'm testing the chip <laughs> and the future work, work which I still need to do is to process these events by using neural network. And uh, thank you, thank you European Union. Um, and this is the end. Thank you very much, Marco. So uh, there is some questions from the audience. Yeah. Well. No, 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 two and three. Same, two and three, yes. No, roughly. You could program that. Yes, I can generate events with one and two only and three and four only if you want. But uh, by using one, two, two, three, three, four, we get higher temporal resolution, no? Then we do it this way. I, I think someone right there no, wanted to ask something. No? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> It will suffer from the same effect, but since it is running thousand uh, frame events per second, 
they do not suffer so much. I didn't say they suff don't suffer, they are more resilient to motion blur. But if a frame-based camera runs at the same uh, frame rate? Yes. Then the yes. should be... Yes, but uh, it will come at the cost of power consumption, no? Well, you can have your camera. Well, but less. <laughs> Why is that? Because I only output, for instance, four bits. I guess... Okay, you okay. just check the ABC. Yes. Okay, thank you. There is some questions from colleagues from Teams. Okay, we tried to use this microphone, so I think there was some noise, no? But I think that they could follow, isn't it? Okay, so uh, I, I had a question. Thank you very much. Uh, or there is some more question, no? I had a question. Thank you very much, Marco, for your presentation. Uh, I'm not an expert on electronics, but I, I was, uh, I, I, was um, I did not know how do you determine this threshold of voltage where you define the difference on events. Well, uh, this is done only in simulations, but you need a real chip to know really how it will look like. So what will I do is that if the chip works, I will. Take, I will be taking picture of something and then I can control it by these thresholds by potentiometers okay. on a PCB that I will design, which will run them to inside a pixel. So I will try to so I will try to find the smallest and I will to adjust uh, manually, we yes, could say. Okay. Yes. okay. And uh, well I will then the, then I will take um, I will make sure that for instance the scene is uniform, no changes. Okay. So I will lower this uh, thre uh, voltage threshold, and when I start detecting pulse events due to mm -hmm. the mismatch, well, then I start taking measures, and uh, that is it. Okay, okay. Because I, I was thinking if this uh, threshold gives you uh, when there are differences, changes uh, in the scene, it would be possible to define it uh, dynamically or not? Or do you fix it in more related no, with no noise? Okay. So it's not possible. I was thinking, I, I don't know how mm -hmm. these event cameras are working precisely, mm -hmm. but I was thinking if you can change this threshold, perhaps you can adapt to different type of events quicker, increasing the sensitivity. Well, uh, not not in real time. So okay. you might know, you will need to know the uh, situation you will be in. So that is the best you can do. Okay. So you have to adjust offline before yeah. testing it. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, one question right there. Well, um, so we still factor is basically just a uh, a division so you have photodiode area and you have the full pixel area so uh, photodiode area is only like silicon um, but the other parts of the uh, pixel also take um, so I, I, can, I can show this here so this is the pixel and this is only the sensing part but everything else like is you have this uh, this uh, uh, circuitry that takes space. So this will um, this will uh, uh, increase the pixel, and uh, it will lower the fill factor if you keep the photodiode uh, the same. So, for instance, the photodiode is uh, a, a, a rectangle of five times five micrometer square. That is it. And the whole chip is around 30 micro, 30 times 32 times 32 micrometers. So five times five divided by 32 times 32. Um, the well, this was uh, we wanted to have a correlated double sampling, and uh, and to use pin photodiode. This is what I got in the end. Also, let, let's say that um, I 
when you reach, when you put layouts, you cannot do iterations as fast when you're only doing nominal simulations. So it takes a longer time to perfect it. For instance, when I first did it, it was 42 times 42 micrometers. Then I did one iteration of post layout simulations to uh, lower it to 32 times 32 micrometers. On the other hand, why it's so big is because I was fighting against this mismatch. If you know, um, let's uh, go back. The priorities is noise is the second. This is what I said, and I was like five, six months in design, so you cannot really change it fast. Uh, and I said, well, fill factor in pixel size is uh, my dump set, um, to say. And well, this is how it turned out. Okay, thank you. Some more questions? I had uh, one last question. You were talking for your future work mm -hmm. that you wanted to use deep learning techniques in order to detect events. In what type of applications you are thinking to use this camera? Well, uh, we, well uh, we could try using it as object detection. Okay. For instance, that is done. Um, well, first to try, I, will, I would like to try a generate image first, you know, okay. uh, because what you basically, if you go and you see event cameras, it's just blue and red dots. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe first try to make a, something more interpretable to the human mind, eye, and then trying object detection and well, okay. that is it. I was thinking, since I'm working in robotics, using in robotics, oh. it's very interesting approach to reduce the time of communication between the robot and the camera. Like, did you can make a more quick control of the robot to do some manipulation tasks, like for example? These cameras are frequently used in robotics. But these are pretty new cameras, like, like last 10 to 15 years, so. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So I think we can finish there. No, no more questions? Okay. Thank you, Marco, again. Thank you.